This section of the course, we're going to do something really cool. This is a section of the class that's going to really, I think, open your eyes when you understand what we talk about here. The topic is rational exponents. So far in the class, we've dealt with exponents like x squared, x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the tenth, whatever. Okay. In this section, what I mean by rational exponent, what it means is we are going to have exponents that are fractions. So instead of x squared, we might have x to the one half x to the one-third, x to the one-fifth, whatever. And I'm going to show you some really neat things that are going to really, I think, uh, help you out. So let's, let's just plow right in and see what we get. Okay, this section, by the way, is crucial. I mean, this, this section, the material we learn in this section is going to really go a long ways. The first thing I'm going to tell you is something rather generic, and then we're going to apply it to the problems, okay? Anytime you see, this is just stuff you're going to have to memorize, okay? But it'll be easy to memorize, you'll see that. Every time you see something like x to the one half power, which is a fraction, you might think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with that? This, fra this I don't even know what to do with. Does it mean it's multiplied by itself? It's not multiplied by itself twice, so what could it possibly mean, okay? This is exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing as this. When we write this square root symbol, what we mean is, and I haven't told you up until now, we've solved a lot of problems like this, but I haven't mentioned it yet. What I mean by this is x raised to the one-half power. Okay? If I have x to the one-third, what that means is x, the cube root of x. And you can see the pattern here. If I've got x to the one-fifth, let's say, that is the fifth root of x. Remember this number up here represents the order of the root that we're talking about? This is exactly the same thing. In fact, it's really double arrows. Anytime I have this, I mean this. Anytime I write this, I mean this. Okay? And that is going to really get you a long, long way. Okay? Um, so let's work a few problems, and uh, we'll just go from there. You will get the hang of this by the time we finish working it. What if you have a problem that's like 81 to the 1 half power? How would you work that? Well, once you remember that this is just a square root symbol, okay, then you do this just like before. Okay, 9 times 9 is 81. So I'm looking for a pair because this is a square root. Okay, here's my pair. So I pull the 9 out. This just equals 9. Simple. It's the same kind of problem that we we're doing before. If you have one fourth raised to the one half power, again, this is a square root. Okay? So one fourth is one half times one half. One half, one times one half gives me one fourth. It's a square root, even though I've written it this way. I'm looking for pairs, so I pull the one half out. This just equals one half. Okay? Um, likewise, if I have 4 over 49, all to the 1 half power. Again, I'm just taking the square root. And um, just to kind of break things up a little bit, if you recall back from how, do you, how you deal with exponents, if you recall back from how to deal with exponents, this is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half up on top over 49 to the 1 half on the bottom. Anytime you have an exponent applied to a fraction, you can apply the exponent to the top and to the bottom separately. That's exactly the same thing. On the top, we have square root